five bank step. <laughs> uh, can you believe that? <laughs> I don't know. I don't all that all I could have to stop from the very beginning. <laughs> Uh, no sound. And earlier I'm saying I've sorted the sound right at the very beginning. Um, let me just go back here. Uh, <laughs> now you know it's live. If this wasn't live, what I would have done is I would have gone back in. I would have edited that out. And you would have said, oh, how perfect, how perfect. Never makes a mistake. But that's part of being human. Um, what I was saying was, uh, yesterday we looked at this word kiss in the Hebrew, and I got one of the letters, uh, not that I got the letters wrong, I got the numerical value wrong, which alters uh, the value, alters the code. So I want to go over that because it's very interesting. Uh, I got that let last letter, the quaff, which is 100, should be, uh, and I said it was 90, and it wasn't, it was 100, and Margot corrected me. <laughs> I can't believe do you know what i've set up here an hour before just going through everything making sure the sound was working uh, <laughs> what can i do what can i do okay let i tell you what i'll do let's go and say hello to a few people and just imagine we're starting all over again uh madeline kirby is the first one on good uh good afternoon to you madeline mary costello from uh, uh, lancaster Shalom and peace over you today. I received that. I received that, Mary. Uh, Linda Evelyn, um, hello from sunny but cool Indiana. It's been very cool here as well. It's unusual for the time of the year. Margie, Margie Hogg, you didn't hear what I was saying about you, Margie, because it was all off air. It was on, it was on, it was on mute. I had the button, the mute button on because I was trying a different background music. Um, where am I? No, what have I got? Oh, my phone is off. Ah, okay. There you go. <laughs> All the interruptions today. Um, uh, good morning to you, Margie, from a soggy. Oh, cool Oklahoma. So good to join live. Uh, yeah, I know. No sound. No sound. Um... Doug Fair and Good Noon Hour from Bramford, Ontario, Canada. Blessings Tribe. Spring is back here. Sunny. 6 centigrade. 43 Fahrenheit. <laughs> no sound. Yeah, no sound. Can't watch today. Internet is awfully slow. In Onconto. No, if I get that. Oh, so sorry, Kathy. You can't join us. Kathy Cruz. Uh, Mary Costello. Good. Thought it was me. <laughs> uh, you can always blame it on somebody else's internet. Um, Katia, uh, good evening from Germany. Good evening to you, Katia. Emma Harvey, good evening from Scotland. Margie Hogg is asking for sound. Uh, Katia is asking for sound. Hi from Kendall, Cumbria and Richardson. Mercy Gay, good morning to you, Mercy. And love from Santa Maria, California. Now, I know you're eight hours uh, behind me, so I know it's morning there. Um, Donna Maria. <laughs> Sound is off. Uh, Linda, what are you saying? Uh, ring up your dad. On mute, on mute. <laughs> we need the ding-dong haze and hoes. Uh, oh, dear me. Okay, let me let, let me just go on. It's done. It's done. Yay. There we go. Mary Costello. Yay. Doug Fern. Yay. Debbie Beck. Did we miss a rant? Yes, she did. <laughs> the rant about yesterday's mistake and Margot pulling me up, you know, which is correct. And that's what I said. It's important that you don't just take what I say. You check it out. But what's very interesting, when I went over it again, you know, that word for kiss, when we looked at the Hebrew values, the numbers. When I went over it again, uh, I, I got something very interesting. I'm going to share that with you, as well as uh, the notes from um, this morning when we did the reading on chapter 1, verse 3. The Hebrew contains a word play with the words name Shem. And uh, sorry for the the word for name in Hebrew is Shem, and the word for oil 
is Shemaine. And I want to just share some things on that. I did say we'd do that this morning. Um, Joe Costello, good morning, Joe. Uh, now, Kimo, okay, nice to hear you. We got little rain and I can see something green. Wow, wow. <laughs> uh, Donna Maria from New Jersey. Good morning to you, Donna. Oh, no, hang on, New Jersey. No, that's afternoon. You're in noonday there. Yeah, good afternoon to you. So there we go. Okay. Now my wife's going to ask me, did you have no sound again? Oh, boy. What can I do? No, the sound hasn't gone. I was just playing around with you. Okay. Uh, let's have a look at this word, kiss. And i got to be very careful because we have such intelligent... Uh, listeners today that check me out to make sure that I'm getting this correct. Let me take you to the overhead here. And actually, I've got, let me, let me do with KISS first. Uh, and I know you can see that. I'm just going to cover this. Hang on. Just bear with me. Uh, there you go. Now, when you're reading Hebrew, and don't forget, we're not talking about the linguistics here. We're not interested in the grammar. Would I pronounce it right? I'm looking at the pictures and the letter, and I'm looking at the numerical value. So uh, it goes from right. Uh, let's just see if I can get this on. Uh, can you believe it? It goes from right to left. Okay, when you're reading it right to left. So we have this letter here, which is a, um, I've got this right, yeah, it's a noon. It's a letter noon. It's, its value is 50. And then we have, and what's very interesting about this, this number 50, is when I say 50 to you, you'll know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about, the year of Jubilee, I'm talking about when everything is restored back to you. So we're talking at, looking at this word kiss and the fact that I I think we touched on, I don't know if we touched on it this morning or yesterday, I think it was this morning, where it's actually equipping. Part of the Hebrew in that is equipping. So when he kisses you, he equips you, okay? Then we have this other letter right in the middle and it's fire. Fire, uh, that's the picture value, and its value is 300. And then finally we have the quaff, which is 100. Now, that's where um, Margie corrected me, because I had 90 on it yesterday, and it made a big difference in the numbers. If I just put a 9 in the 90, it's 9, 12, 17. But with the correct letter, it's 5 plus 3. I'm not counting the zeros. 5 plus 3 plus 1 is 8, is 9. So then we have this number 9. Now, very, very interesting, the number 9. And I wrote a few things out, you know, from my encyclopedia on numbers. Number 1, it's the maximum singular digital number, digit number. Two, it's the number of the Holy Spirit. So when we're talking about kiss, let him smother me with his kisses, Song of Song says. Let, have you ever felt that? Have you ever felt, have you ever been in that place where you feel the Holy Spirit is just smothering you? He's kissing you. And when he's kissing you, I used to tell people this because People would get carried away with the experience of it, you know, the high, the adrenaline that you get when God comes on you. And I, I would tell them, look, when that happens to you, when you get an impartation, when that anointing's coming on you, and again, we'll have a look at that word anointing in a minute, uh, it imparts something to you. Do you understand? It's a bit, the only way I can relate it is, it's like the manna. Do you remember when the children of Israel were in the, in the desert and the Lord provided for them every morning? It says when the dew lifted, the manna was there, the bread was there. 
And so when you have an experience with God where you feel him kissing you and smothering you and his anointings coming on you, don't get so wrapped up. Don't get so focused on how you feel. I mean, yeah, enjoy it. Enjoy the feeling. It's a wonderful feeling. Enjoy it. But look, be focused. Look for the impartation that comes with it. Amen? Look for the impartation that comes with it. Because that word kiss in Hebrew also means equipping. Equipping you. And um, and then when we look at the code, let me just go back to this. Uh, when we look at the code, the number nine, it's the maximum singular digital number. It's the number of the Holy Spirit. And if you look in Scripture, you'll find that there are nine gifts of the Spirit in Corinthians that are listed, his power gifts and activity. And then look at this. It's the hour of prayer, the Jewish hour, the ninth hour a biblical time of prayer. Now, now, it's also the ninth hour, a biblical time of prayer. And then in Acts chapter 3, John and Peter and John went to the temple to pray at the ninth hour. At that time, a man crippled from birth got healed. In Acts chapter 10, Cornelius, and this was a major switch from a Jewish, from a mainly Jewish people getting saved to Gentiles in Acts chapter 10. Um, it says this, let me just see if I've got it here. Uh, bom, bom, bom. So we have the gifts of healing. Uh, just bear with me, I've just lost my place. Acts chapter 10, God sent an angel to meet Cornelius at the ninth hour. Uh, he and his family were the first Gentiles to become Christians. The Holy Spirit descend, descended upon the disciples in the ninth week. They descended upon the disciples in the ninth week of the Jewish calendar. So that number nine is related with the Holy Spirit. I'm so glad, Margot, you pulled me up on that. See how the difference? I was looking at 17 because I got one letter code wrong. Uh, but when you get the right number in there, see what it opens up to you. Now let's go to, quickly, um, I don't know what I'm going to be able to do this. I'm, to, I'm going to find my notes here. Um, I was going to have a look at this word, uh, and I'm going to have to take you to another scripture reference here. Let's see, number three. There you go. Let me just come... Come on this. Um, we're on verse 3. Your anointing oils. I'm reading from the ESV here because I want to show you the Hebrew. Your anointing oils are fragrant. So if we take that word anointing, I'm using a, um olive tree Bible app, Strong's version, and I can click on the anointing, and there you can see... Um, it gives us, it gives it us, uh, no, I'm not, <laughs> I've lost my notes on this because this is not the right uh, thing. It gives us the word Taba from 2895 and uh, it's a noun, both in the masculine and the feminine. It's singular and plural and it, it means good, a good or, let's see if I can go, or a good thing, a good man or woman, the good, the goods or good things, good men or women. Also in the adverb, beautiful. So you can see that. And that letter, that ninth letter, uh, the tet, which is, let me just show you how that's drawn. Um, let's see, get this right. Uh, the tet is the number nine. And so you see, it's the goodness. So his kisses are so wonderful, aren't they? His kisses. Now let me have a look at this word. That's the anointing. So when that anointing comes on you, let me go for, uh, let's see, your anointing oils 
are fragrant, fragrant, your name. Now let me have a look at the word name. Now this is what I wanted because I got it mixed up. Bear with me. Name. Uh, let me just take you back to this. There you go. I got I got on the wrong path there. Let me just take that off. So we're looking at verse three. Your anointing oils are fragrant. Fragrant. Your name, and that's the one I wanted. It's these two letters here. It's the sheen, and it's the mem. It's a, it's a closed mem. Let me show you. Just bear with me, and I, I, I know it's difficult if you don't understand the letters, but once you understand the letters and you understand the numbers and the pictures. Uh, you you begin to get something. This is what I got out of it. So if we look at name in oil, and in the reading at the bottom, uh, Brian Simmons, he says the Hebrew contains a word play, it's under F, uh, with the words name, which is this one, which is Shem. And then let me just swing back to show you the other one, the oil. Well, I tell you what, let me just, well, no, let me come down here. I've got to come down here and show you this. Let's take the word oil. Which is cement. These words are related. Semen. Let me give you the spelling for it. In um, I got the right one. Just checking because we're going to have Margie pulling me up again. Uh, now let me go back in. Just get that other one for. Uh, And this is the one for name. This is how you spell it in. Now I just want to show you something here. We're going right to left. This is fire. This is fire. But you see this one here for oil? It's an open what they call an open man. That's the name of the letter. This letter here is a man. But it's closed. Now this is what the Lord showed me. When the anointing comes on you, when the anointing comes on you. You see, this is the difference between just teaching something. Uh, you know, you can sit under the word with no anointing on it, and it kills you. But when the anointing comes, let me go back to this again. Just forgive me that I'm back and forth here. But I've just got to show you this. When the anointing comes on you, this is a mem, the same letter, but it's a closed in other words, it's mysterious. His name is wonderful, isn't it? His name is wonderful because it's mysterious, but it's a closed man. But when that anointing comes, and these two, two uh, words, name, let me come further down, name and oil, what the anointing does, what the anointing does is it opens your eyes. It opens your eyes to begin to see the invisible to begin to understand the mystical. It reveals the mysteries to you, things that are hidden. A mystery is something that is hidden. Isn't that wonderful? So when he kisses you, when he kisses you, and what, the, what does he say? Let's go back to this verse again. Um, verse 3, Your anointing oils are fragrant. Your name is oil 
poured out, therefore the virgins love you. Your name is oil poured out. So that's the difference with an anointing. When the anointing comes, it breaks the yoke. When the anointing comes, it enlightens you. It gives you revelation. When the anointing comes, you begin to see who you really are in him. You begin to see who he is. It's no longer covered. You know, a lot of times in the Gospels, the disciples did not understand what Jesus was saying. They never even got it about the crucifixion. On the way to Jerusalem, they never even understood, even when he told them, that he was going to Jerusalem and what was going to happen to him, they never received it. But when the two were on the road to Emmaus and they were downhearted and dejected and Jesus comes along and that anointing begins to flow, it opens their eyes and they say, didn't we, didn't our hearts burn within us? Now, here's the thing. You can sit under the word and it can kill you. It can kill you. The word, the letter killer. The letter killer, but the spirit giveth life. So we've looked at those two. I know I'm a bit long-winded in this, but um, isn't that wonderful? So we need to ask the Lord, when we come into the Song of Songs and we begin to meditate upon him, we need to just... Be open, just let him, let him come, let him come, let him overwhelm you. I drink the new wine of the Spirit, as uh, Song of Songs 2 verse 4 says. He brought me into his house of wine and intoxicated me. Just take a drink, take a drink. Don't try and understand it with your natural mind. It goes beyond your natural mind. The natural man cannot receive the things of the Spirit of God. God. Come under that anointing. Come under that kiss, that smothering kiss. And let the oil, let the wine begin to intoxicate you. Let the wine begin to just help you digest the meat. Because if you don't have the wine, <laughs> if you don't have the anointing, then you'll choke. It'll kill you. You can't have meat without the wine. You have to have the wine to help you to digest. And it's all about coming in to this love relationship with the Lord. It's all about letting him do what he wants to do in you. Amen. It's all about letting down your fences. <laughs> it's hard, isn't it? Especially if you've, if you've been... Uh, you know, if you've never had a good father, you, you know, you're past or whatever. Um, but you come, come as you are and let him change you. Amen. We're not saying stay as you are. Please don't stay as you are. <laughs> when you come with your mess, don't stay in a mess. Let him take the mess. Let him cleanse you. Let him anoint you. Let him give you that strong wine, intoxicating that will take you outside of yourself. Let that anointing begin to flow over you, pour over you, over you, over you, over you. And let it begin to open your eyes, let you begin to see, number one, how beautiful he is. Number two, how he sees you, how beautiful you are. Amen, amen, amen. I'm out of time, so let's go to the reading quickly. and. Um, it's over and over is the title, and hopefully I can get this so that you can see it. Over and over, your presence releases a fragrance so pleasing. Over and over, poured out. For your lovely name is flowing oil. No wonder the brides-to-be adore you. That's the Passion Translation. Over and over again, Jesus will faithfully come, woo your heart until you are totally 
his. Your passion may not be fully awakened to his love, but if it's your desire, he will not disappoint. Jesus knows exactly what you need and precisely how to stir your love. All you have to do is ask. That's all you've got to do, ask. His love is irresistible. When it crashes upon your hearts like unrelenting waves, with one taste of his divine passion, we are addicted, lovesick. Lovesick ones become even more lovesick, and hardened hearts melt like wax. There's that fire, that letter, the sheen in the middle of that uh, name and the oil. Um, let me see. And hardened hearts melt like wax when he comes on the scene. Just to think of him opens us to the sweetness of true love. Isn't that wonderful? Um, I notice you've noted something there, Kim. I'll come back to it in a minute. Let me just finish this reading. I'll come back to your, your notes on the NIV. Uh, just to think of him opens us to the sweetness of true love ever so graciously. God pours a continuous stream of love into the deepest caverns of our soul. Though we cannot fathom the depths of his love with our minds, we can experience them in life-changing measures. Amen, amen, amen. Now, let's just pray this prayer together. And uh, just before we do, what are you saying, Kimo? I really like how the NIV is saying, yeah, there's a song. Somebody wrote a song like that, Kimo. Uh, let me just put this up here. Let me just bring you on. Uh, I really like how NIV is saying, let me just put, move you over here so it looks like I'm looking at, at this, <laughs> which I am. Uh, I really like how NIV is saying, your name is like perfume poured out. Song of Songs, chapter 1, verse 3. Isn't that wonderful? Amen, amen, amen. Thanks for that, Kimo. Let's pray then. Don't forget the theme is over and over. Song of Songs, chapter 1, verse 3. And we pray this prayer. Jesus, come. Now and always, I want to encounter your love. I want to know you as well as you know me. Quench my thirsty soul with the power of your passion and draw me. You see, he has to draw us. Lord, draw me. Draw me into the depths of your presence that I've yet to discover. No matter how long it takes, make me Fully yours, Lord, with no barriers to restrict our love. Make us, Lord, make us fully, fully yours, with no barriers to restrict your love. Isn't that wonderful? Wow. <laughs> that was a bit of a rocky start right at the beginning. No sound. <laughs> uh, but we got the, we got the, the Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you and grant you shalom, 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 everybody. Shalom. Thanks for joining me.